Okay, made some progress, quick video, running through standard test pattern you've all seen before. I press enter, and the internet of things happens. It interrupts the pattern it was doing, and starts doing a different pattern. It does a little 45 degree motion, and then spins back to center. Then arm one rotates 180. And then does another little 45 degree motion. Goes back to center and then does another 180. Okay, so because the ESP8266 is a Wi Fi equipped microcontroller, I've got it connecting to um, my MQTT server and I can publish new patterns to this over the air. Um, so I was a little bit concerned that adding the polling every two seconds would interrupt the motion, but so far the motion seems pretty smooth. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. I have had it pause and hitch occasionally when it has to reconnect to the MQTC server if the connection dropped out for some reason. Like if I cover up the Wi-Fi chip with my thumb and take my thumb away, it might hitch when it tries to reconnect. No, it seems to handle it. Anyway, I'll keep an eye out for that. If it causes sort of irregularities in the sand drawing pattern, then it's a showstopper. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, so, yeah, it's just sending a, a G-code payload on a, a, on a topic that this is listening to, and you can load new code in. At the moment, it doesn't save it. If I hit the reset button, it just goes back to doing the default. Um, I will have it save those to the file system, and then pick a random pattern, and then also add the ability to delete patterns over Wi-Fi. If I want to fun and games. Um, I've incorporated a few design improvements so you can see arm one here is split vertically the new design has a horizontal split um, so those bolts are put under tension not under shear so the tension of the belt doesn't try to bow that arm one any more than it should. Um, this pin here that secures arm one to shaft one has been rotated 90 degrees so you can punch it out you can't punch this pin out at the present you have to just destroy arm one if you want to take it off the shaft. And the little blue plastic tabs I have there to go through the slot adopter switches, they are now incorporated into the into the model. And uh, there's a few other bits and bobs. But, you know, progress. I have not dropped the hammer and ordered the PCBs. I'm still good at all in this awful breadboard. Um, because I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to be able to get the performance out of the ESP8266 that I want. I might have to upgrade to the ESP32, which is a bit more expensive, but it's got this a bit more sheer extra features. That's got an ESP32 in it. Um, it's a Atom Light. Uh, the company called M5 Stack make these. Um, they're kind of cool, but not as cheap as they could be. But still pretty cheap. That's like 12 bucks Australian delivered, something. Good times. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to go for the ESP. I don't ever need to move this fast um, when drawing on sand, it's not necessary, but I would like the performance overhead if I need it, considering the DRV8825 stepper drivers can drive at 32 by um, micro stepping, and these are only driving at 16 by, so I'd only be able to drive as half as fast as this. Um, so next up, I've um, been putting it off, but I'm going to try to do the, the kinematic stuff next. The inverse kinematics to turn a coordinate into two angles. So I can um, do Cartesian coordinate drawing stuff rather than polar coordinate. Well, not uh, rather than ang raw angles on each joint. Okay, bye-bye.